What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the classic tune, Jerusalem Ridge. Now this tune was originally written by Kenny Baker and this, this arrangement that I came up with here is kind of a combination of the Tony Rice version and the Norman Blake version. It uses a lot of elements from each of their sort of interpretations of the tune. And so I kind of combined elements of those and all the other ones as well into this arrangement here. And we're gonna be playing this out of Capo 2 and it mostly centers around the A minor chord shape. We're really gonna be playing this out of B minor, the true sounding key of B minor. But since we're playing capo two, we're gonna be using the A minor chord shape. And in this lesson, we're gonna cover the complete melody, parts A, B, C, and D, and then also the rhythm and the chords for this song as well, so you can back up other players. So I hope you enjoy this one. Let's check it out. Let's check out the melody now for Jerusalem Ridge. Of course, there's a small intro section, which is a, a rhythm section, um, right before the melody comes in. And we're gonna cover that in the rhythm video at the end here. But in this video here, we're gonna start with the melody for Jerusalem Ridge, starting with measure number one. We're starting with that open A string on a downstroke to second fret to third fret. And then we're going to that open D and then 2nd fret D. You can see we're just playing over the kind of the A minor scale or the C major scale. They're both kind of related to each other. And I'm playing this with my index and my middle finger here. I just kind of prefer to play it that way. Okay, that 2nd fret D there, that's on an 8th note. And then we're gonna come back in on that second fret D with a downstroke to third, to second, to open. So that eighth note there represents a slight pause in the melody. Okay, and then from there we hit third fret A, second fret D, and then open D. Okay, and then to finish it out, we have third fret A on an upstroke, second fret A, and then third fret A again. You wanna to try to make the volume of each note as even as possible. Okay, and that brings us into measure number two now. Measure number two is gonna start kind of the same way measure number one did, with that open A, second fret A, and third fret A. And again, just like in measure number one, we're gonna have that open D and the second fret D again. And then you'll see here we move to the open G, second fret G, to open. And then we're gonna descend, so we're gonna hit that second fret D to open, third fret A, and then second fret D to open again. But that second fret D to open is gonna be on an up down. Okay, and then right here, we've got our middle finger available, so we're gonna play that third fret A, 2nd fret D to open with your index finger. And then 3rd fret A to open. That, that open A there, that's an 8th note, so that's going to ring out as well. So I'm playing this entire melody of the first two measures with my index and my middle finger. Okay, 
let's play measures one and two now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. 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 Okay, and that leads us into measure number three. Okay, when you look at measures three and four now, you'll notice that measure number three is identical to measure number one. So it's the same melody. And the only thing I'd say here is that you have the option here of how you want to play this or the inflection that you want to kind of play this at. So right there when you have that eighth note on that second fret D, you can either let that ring out like that, or another cool thing to do is play it kind of staccato and then pick up second half of the measure there after a brief rest in between those two second fret D notes there. So you're kind of landing on that and then stopping the vibration of the string there to create more of a staccato effect. And then the second time around you might play it. So those little subtleties that really add kind of dimension to your playing. So let's take a look at measure number four now. So here in measure number four, we have an E to an A minor, or an E major to an A minor shape, since we're playing out of capo two. And it's gonna start out here again, similar to what we had in the previous measures, that open A, second fret A to third fret A, and then we're moving up to that D again, second fret D. And then just like in measure number two, we have our open G, second fret G, and open, fret, open G. Okay, and then again, you'll see that second fret D to open. And right there, we're actually going to an E major chord very briefly, just for one quarter note. And then we're going to hit the 3rd fret A, 2nd fret A, to open. And that gives it kind of a conclusion. It makes the melody feel like it's sort of concluding right there. It's sort of a turnaround feel. So let's play measures 3 and 4 now, all the way through to the metronome. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two. Three, four.
All right, let's play the A part now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. 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 Okay, now leads us into part B. Mm -hmm. 